based on previous year patterns i had seen that you are required to solve only 50 55% of the paper accurately to score a 99 percentile plus and that is what i aimed at For the past year at Inside IIM, we have been conducting one-on-one -on -one career coaching sessions as counsel, short domain-specific courses, master classes, and university-affiliated certificate programs. Now, we are extremely excited to announce that we have a new home for all these highly rated programs in altuni.in. So, if you are looking to earn a high salary, get a promotion, switch jobs, click on the link in the description or just visit altuni.in. Thank you, enjoy the video and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update. Cheers. Hi, I'm Ms. Khan. I scored a 99.45 percentile in CAT and I will be joining the PGP batch at I'm Ahmedabad this year. I scored a 10 CGPA in class 10th, 93.2 percentage in class 12th and a 9 CGPA in my graduation. I am a fresher and I will be graduating from Shivnanda University with a bachelor's in economics. I think it was during my time at Shivnanda University that I developed interest in management and I decided this is something I would want to pursue further so I started preparing for CAD. Initially I got myself enrolled in the classes a year before the actual paper. I wasn't doing much in the start, I was just attending the classes and solving the worksheets which were given. My serious preparation started once the lockdown began. So now my coaching classes had shifted online and I started attending those. After a month or so of attending these classes, I thought of giving my first few mocks. In these mocks, I realized while my performance in VRC was good, my performance in QA and DLR was not up to the mark. I also saw that the online classes weren't working very well for me firstly because of the pace at which the classes went and second the questions which were asked in these classes weren't very relevant for me so I stopped attending these online classes and decided I will start self-preparing in QA and DILR for VRC, I kept attending the online classes. After giving these mocks, I also saw that my performance in QA and DILR was not good because I didn't remember these concepts. In the next two months, I decided to solely focus on QA and DILR where I built my concepts. I didn't give any mocks in this period, mainly because I felt demotivated after seeing the mock results. And secondly, I didn't see any use in giving mocks when I had to look at the solutions each and every time I solved a question. Along with that, for VARC, I also read articles online. I mainly refer to editorials from the Hindu, The Economist, and also read a few articles on Aeon essays. Uh, I read a couple of novels too, but I realized that articles give you a more variety of topics than what a novel does, so I stuck mostly to reading articles. In LRDI, I mainly solved the worksheets which were given by my institute and I also looked at the previous year papers. In DILR, it is very important to look at the previous year papers because it gives you an idea about the type of questions that are previously asked and the variety of the questions that can be asked. This helps you in some way gauge what kind of questions you can expect in the papers. In QA, I mainly focused on building my concept. For that, I refer to this book by Nishit Sinha on quantitative aptitude. For topics that I found tricky, I would either watch lectures on the institute's website or I would go on to YouTube and search for any material that was freely available. With this, I started to build up my concepts and after two months or so, I was pretty confident that now I know the concepts and I should start giving mocks. The first mock that I gave, uh, I was very disappointed because my performance in QA and DILR hadn't improved now also. I analyzed those mocks and after solving the mock again after giving the actual mock, I saw that I can solve the questions later on but it is difficult for me to solve those questions in the stipulated amount of time which is given for the mock. A reason for that was my calculation speed. In the coming few weeks, I focus mainly on building on my calculation speeds. I learned tables, reciprocal, squares, cubes, etc. 
for analyzing mock even if i had a question right or wrong in the actual mock i would still solve it again and then look at the solutions for analyzing a mock i would solve the question again after solving the mock irrespective of the fact whether i had got it right or wrong in the first place after that i would look at the solution to see if there's a better way to reduce time along with this i would also compare the time i had taken versus the time other people had taken to solve the same question i would also look at certain questions which i had gotten wrong and would see if this question was worth attempting or sh i should have focused my time on other questions which were easier this way i built on further and i started to see improvement in dilr and qa uh, now i started to lag behind in vrc mainly because i was mostly focusing on the other two sections in vrc i realized that va is my strength and rc is not so much so my strategy mainly was to solve vas first in as little time as possible and then move on to rcs in rcs i also saw one problem that i was facing was while i was reading the rcs i would lose the connection which the author was trying to build to overcome this problem i started to create flow charts where i would take one or two central ideas from each paragraph and then i would connect it via means of a flow chart before attempting the questions related to that rc i would go through the flow chart to establish whatever the author was trying to communicate and then i would solve the questions in solving the questions for vrc one more thing that helped me was uh to eliminate the answer choices rather than select the right ones while giving mocks for vrc mostly i would solve the va section first and then rcs but on the actual day i had to switch my strategy i started with solving the va section first only to realize that it is slightly difficult at that point you also need to realize if it is difficult for you then it's probably difficult for everybody else i switched my strategy at the last moment and i started solving the rcs first this way i was able to solve rcs which were comparatively easier and score some marks in that section in vrc my strategy was not to attempt a lot of questions rather than attempt each and every question with the utmost accuracy now coming to lrdi in lrdi my focus was to uh, solve the easiest sets first so i would give the first 5 or 6 minutes to set selection i would go through each and every set and arrange them in the level of difficulty uh, i would then start with the first set and go on to sets which were more difficult in dilr it is important to solve one set in the first 10 or 15 minutes cause it sort of relieves you of the mental pressure that is built on and secondly you also need to realize that if you aren't able to solve a set in the first 5 or 6 minutes or find any hint that leads you to solving the set you should probably move on to the next set rather than waste time on the same set in a qa um i played on to my strengths i knew that questions with lengthy calculations would take me longer so i would first solve questions which didn't involve a lot of calculations and then move on to questions which were easier but involved certain calculations after solving all these questions then i would go on to questions which involved a lot of calculations or were uh, slightly difficult along with this my focus on every section was on accuracy based on previous year patterns i had seen that you are required to solve only 50 55% of the paper accurately to score a 99 percentile plus and that is what i aimed at so i tried to solve 55% of the paper with uh, at most accuracy and that is how i went about it to anybody who's preparing right now my first tip would be to uh, focus equally on all sections i neglected vrc and lost the advantage that i had in that uh, in the start i would suggest you to not do that and divide your time and energy equally towards all sections while focusing a little more on sections you're weaker at second it is very important to be in the right frame of mind when you're giving the actual paper so stop doing anything that you are doing or giving new mocks in the last 2 or 3 days focus on being calm and do something that you enjoy so that you are in a calm and composed state of mind to give the actual paper uh, along with this while preparing i think the key is to stay consistent 
even when things are not going well you need to just focus and build on your strengths and improve on your weaknesses you can do this by analyzing mocks well and then going on from there along with this one more thing uh, is to remember why you started the entire journey this way you will stick towards the end and if you put in efforts from the very start to the very end i am pretty sure you'll score well